Uh, hello everyone, welcome to another Sky Blue Simulation stream. Sky Blue here, aka Drew. We'll be doing this flight review video reviewing the Ecamm ELEC page configurations. We'll be using the simulator X-Plane 11 using the TOLUS Airbus A321. We'll go over normal configurations on ground and then in flight first before going over abnormal configurations. My only reference for this video is FCOM Systems ATA24. Disclaimer, don't attempt to use this video as reference for real-world flying. Always consult your company, training manuals, or documentations, as well as your CFIs. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let's familiarize ourselves with the Ecamm ELEC page as well as the ELEC overhead panel. So we're just going to touch lightly on the Ecamm ELEC page. So first of all, uh, does this look... Uh, may be familiar to you the ecamm elec page and the elec overhead panel so the elec overhead panel shows the basic architecture of a normal configuration so we are in flight right now uh, we'll be discussing the ground configurations in just a moment but here's the normal configuration uh, the engine each engine is powering a generator and then the so let's say engine one generator one uh, so follow this fat green line over here. So it powers AC bus 1. AC bus 1 powers DC bus 1 with the uh, transformer rectifier which uh, converts AC power to DC power. It also powers the AC essential bus uh, as well. Now uh, for Gen 2, Gen 2 is a bit more straightforward. The AC bus 2 is uh, powered by it which in turn also powers the DC bus by way of the transformer rectifier unit. So again, you do have some buttons here, uh, like this AC essential feed and the bus tie, and we're not going to touch that uh, much. This is just the basic uh, layout, just to let you know that you know the ELEC overhead panel gives you basic architecture of. Uh, the normal electric configuration so we'll get to it in just a bit now when you start up the aircraft usually you will be on external power so let's check what it looks like here on the ecam so go to your lower ecam we're gonna enlarge this a bit and go for the elect page as you can see here the external power x pow is supplying ac bus one and two ac bus one also supplies ac essential bus now each AC bus supplies its respective transformer rectifier which transfers or rather converts AC power to DC power. DC uh, bus 1 has uh, DC essential and the DC battery as well. Now let's say we want to uh, get on APU power. So why don't we turn on the APU, APU master switch on. So now you can see an amber of uh, APU gen appearing as well. At the same time, the APU page will come up on the lower ECAM, and now you can start that APU. So what does the ECAM look like? Nothing yet. The APU generator has not been started. However, on the APU page, you will see the N percentage increasing for the APU. So let's uh, get that APU up and running. APU generator is now on. Now, APU is avail, however, external power takes priority in supplying the aircraft. So once we disconnect external power, APU generator will be doing all that work. So three, two, one, external power, avail. There we go. So now there's a load on the APU generator, 32%. And uh, notice also the external power is also displayed here on the ELEC. It means that external power is avail and connected. Now what happens if we disconnect the external power? So let's go to mech and uh, grab from cockpit, remove external power, roger. The external power disappears. So now you got the APU generator taking the load of the external power by supplying AC bus 1 and 2 and so on and so forth. Right, so for this scenario, we're going to start just one engine only from one engine taxi. Usually that's engine one, and then we'll observe uh, the ECAM, ELEC page as well. So here we go. Most letter ignition, member crosses, leader left side, engine one master switch uh, on. 
as good an Elex. So right now we only have the APU just supplying the APU Gen AC bus 1 and 2. Gen 1 is loading. So now uh, Gen 1 is now supplying AC bus 1 which is supplying TR1 and AC Essential. Now since Gen 2 is not powered yet, APU Gen is the generator supplying AC bus 2. So now we've started engine 1, which means Gen 1 is on as well as the APU Gen. Gen 1 supplying AC bus 1, APU Gen supplying AC bus 2. But what if we called for the external power? So now it's connected because it says XPOW on the ELEC page. And once you turn it on, see what happens. The external power is now supplying whatever the generator is not supplying. It's uh, generating or uh, supplying AC bus 2. So the APU gen is just on, but it's not supplying anything. So again, uh, in order, the AC buses will prefer a generator first, external power second, and then last, the APU. Alright, so we're taxiing out. We're just about to start engine 2 from a 1 engine taxi. Here we go. No amber crosses. Bleed our right side. Engine 2. Master switch on. So the expected behavior here will be Gen 2 will now supply AC bus 2 and APU Gen will not be supplying anything. Now, Gen 2 supplying AC bus 2. So now the APU Gen isn't uh, really supplying anything at all. So this is more or less the normal configuration uh, on ground. And once you turn off the APU, uh, we'll do this uh, just before takeoff in play. But pretty much this is how the normal electric configuration is supposed to be uh, right now on the ground. Alright, so now we're holding short of the runway. The parking brake is on and we are now on uh, generators 1 and 2 supplying their respective AC buses. But now, what happens if we turn off generators. We do have the APU still on, so what's it gonna fall back to? So let's connect the solar power for some odd reason while we are on the holding point of runway 06 here in Manila. And why don't we turn off generator one? So gen one is off. The APU gen is now supplying AC bus one. But what about uh, generator number two? Why don't you turn that off as well? So now you have the APU generator now supplying AC bus 1 and AC bus 2. Now, how come it's not the external power? The external power is indeed connected, but it is just a veil. So if we turn the external power on, so now the external power is supplying both AC bus 1 and 2. What if you turn the uh, APU gen off then? Nothing happens because again, it will get power from the external power first before going to the APU. Now if there's nothing from the external power, uh, it will be the generator 1 and uh, 2, provided it is on. So why don't we turn that back on now? Ooh, hold on. So yes, the APU gen is off, of course, uh, it's not being used. Again, the generators take priority first, followed by the external power followed by the APU generator. So that's the hierarchy of uh, AC power in the Airbus once you lose uh, your uh, generators. We are airborne now, so this is how it looks like in flight. Notice that the APU gen has lost its box. But now we have gen 1 and 2 supplying their respective AC buses. Alright, let's get into some abnormal configurations now. So for this one, uh, the first one will be failure of one engine generator. So let's just assume this has failed, and we'll actually turn this off right now. Alright, so the system automatically replaces the failed generator with the APU gen if it's available. Since it is not available, the other engine generator, which is generator 1, 
will come in and take up the load, the slack of generator two. Part of the galley load and the DC bus entertainment, if it is installed here, is automatically shed. So for this feature here in the Tolis, the galley button, uh, auto shed, which means if you look at the ECAM, there is galley shed. It allows all the galley load to be automatically shed. Now, uh, what if, let's demonstrate this. What if we turn, out, turn the APU on? So now the APU generator is uh, turning on. Let's clear this. Of course, this isn't, go this isn't going to be standard ECAM actions. This is just only for uh, demonstrating. So let's go ahead and start that APU. And then once the APU uh, does, uh, the generator comes online, we'll check the ELEC page. We'll do that now. So if Gen 1 goes kaput, then you're pretty much screwed unless you turn on the APU. Now if the APU also loses power, well, you don't have external power, do you? So now it comes down to the uh, emergency generator, the RAT. But we're just assuming that we would fail the generator 2 in the reality. We just turned it off. But uh, this is how it's going to go either way. Uh, no, I did not mean to <laughs> bring down the compass. All right, so now the APU generator is running. As you can see, the load of uh, Gen 1 supplying AC bus 2 has been taken over by the APU generator. Gen 2, what if now, AC bus 1 fails? So let's go ahead and uh, look for that failure. And uh, now apply. Oh. So yeah, that, that's what happens. Uh, Autopilot, but uh, there is a procedure for this. AC essential feed alternate. So now we have all the systems back online. So now you can see that AC bus 2 can supply AC essential bus and the essential TR uh, can supply the DC essential bus. So this is a TR essential, essential TR, same thing, both via the AC essential uh, feed push button. So this is what we just did, the AC essential feed uh, push button. This is done automatically. There are some uh, aircraft that have automatic uh, AC essential feed uh, auto switching. And uh, in this case, the other uh, DC bus, so DC bus 2 supplies DC uh, bus 1 and DC bat bus automatically after 5 seconds. So basically, you got nothing going on with your uh, AC uh, essential 1 uh, right now. So note that it's just the generator, the APU is on, but it doesn't seem to be supplying uh, AC bus 2. Right, a bit of a supplementary. What happens if it's AC bus 2 that fails? Let's find out. The autopilot and uh, auto thrust doesn't go off. And uh, we don't have the lower ECAM. So what do we do? This is when we put the switching. So looks like it's on the captain's side, all the uh, displays. So put the ECAM and the transfer and you'll see the lower ECAM page, the system page. ELEC, so if you do take a look, uh, Gen 2 is on but not supplying AC bus 2. AC bus 2 is shot, not supplying uh, the AC essential, of course. Um, traditionally, it's AC bus 1 that supplies AC essential bus. Of course, Gen 1 is uh, on as well. And DC bus 2, now coming from DC bus 1, the DC battery. So, not much. All right, next is the failure of one TR transform rectifier or a TRU transform rectifier unit. So any side, let's see what happens. Okay, so we do have a fault. FCOM says the contactor of each TR opens automatically in case of overheat or minimum current. The other TR automatically replaces the faulty one and the essential TR 
uh, supplies the DC essential bus. So as you can see, DC1, uh, DC bus 1 now coming from uh, TR2, DC2, DC bat to DC1. So uh, not much. Now what about failure of TR1 and TR2? Why don't we try that? All right, it looks a bit more serious, but why don't we look at this? If TR1 and TR2 are lost, DC bus 1 and 2 and the battery bus are lost. The DC essential bus is now supplied by the essential uh, TR. So the essential TR coming from AC essential and uh, coming from, in this case, AC uh, bus 1. Well, it does come from AC bus 1 traditionally. So next up, we have emergency generation after loss of all main generators. So let's fail. Uh, okay, so let's just assume that we cannot use the APU. We can fail the uh, APU generator as well. What do we do that? Now, ELEC. Now, ELEC. Now, so this is what it looks like. If both AC bus 1 and 2 are lost and the aircraft speed is above 100 knots, the ram air turbine extends automatically. This powers the blue hydraulic system. Alright, let's stop there. Let's apply this now. Let's pause for a bit. Does the rat come out? We're over 100 knots. Yes, it does. The rat does come out. And uh, we're not on autopilot, so of course we cannot do that. Our operating camp says we're in ELEC emergency configuration. Now, the RAM air turbine will uh, system page to ND display. This powers the blue hydraulic system. So if you look at the hydraulics page, we do have the RAT. It is now supplying the blue hydraulic system. Driving the emergency generator by means of a hydraulic motor. So if we go to ELEC, you can see now that the emergency generator is... Uh, uh, operating. This generator supplies the AC essential bus and the DC essential bus by via the TR essential or the essential uh, TR. Now when the landing gear is down, the emergency generator is no longer powered and the emergency generation network is transferred to batteries and the static converter and the system sheds the AC shed essential and DC shed essential buses. Now what about smoke configuration? Smoke configuration and this configuration, the main bus bars are shed. The electrical distribution is the same as it is in the elec emergency electrical configuration, which is the loss of main generators. Except the fact that in smoke configuration, the fuel pumps are connected upstream of the Gen 1 line connector. So, upstream of the line connector and not below. This procedure sheds approximately 75 of the electrical equipment. All equipment that remains powered is supplied by the circuit breakers on the overhead panel. So this is part of the uh, smoke procedure. Gen 1 line off. So now from Gen 1 0% it became 4% and the reason for that is so Gen 1 line contactor opens the Gen 1 remains running and supplies one fuel pump in each wing tank. That's it. Let's now get into flight on batteries. From an emergency electric configuration, there are one of two ways you can do flight on batteries. The first one, which is not illustrated or shown here in the sim on the Tolis Airbus, is if the landing gear is down. The second one, which will be shown here in a bit, is if the rat stalls or if the aircraft is on the ground with a speed below 100 knots. In both cases, the emergency generator is no longer powered or has nothing to drive it respectively and the emergency generation network automatically transfers to the batteries and the static inverter and the system automatically sheds the AC shed essential and DC shed essential buses. So now we're going to put the aircraft in a condition that it's uh, slow enough to transfer into the batteries. So uh, let's uh, continue. There. Observe that we are now slow enough that the batteries and the static inverter are now the sources of power. So you look at the DC bat bus that is now connected to the batteries. Slow, slow. Slow, slow. 
We'll now do batteries only on ground. The key numbers here are 100 knots and 50 knots. At 100 knots, the DC battery bus automatically connects to the batteries. Of note, APU start is only available when speed is below 100 knots because of this reason. Note that when you land, you will not have auto braking, nose wheel steering, or reversers. At 50 knots, AC essential bus is automatically shed, leading to the loss of display units. Let's go ahead and land this thing. 400. There, at 100 knots, the DC battery bus automatically connects to the batteries. We're now approaching 50 knots. Expect to lose all your display units due to the shedding of the AC essential bus. Alright guys, I hope you guys learned something from this video. Thanks for uh, watching this video on uh, electrical configurations as it relates to the ECAM here in the TOLUS Airbus A321 on X-11. My name is SkyBlue AK Drew. If you liked what you saw, give this video a like and subscribe uh, to this channel as well so you know uh, when our streams or when the next video will be coming up. Uh, usually I fly online on VAT7 on x 11. Again guys, my name is Sky Blue, aka Drew. Have a wonderful rest of your day, night, wherever you guys are in the world. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace. Until the next uh, stream or video, see ya!